It's important that fans know that we get a lift from seeing our green and gold in the stands. Passionate, tough games. They're on our soil and we want the three points. Come watch us play against Japan and create another memory of Socceroos history. Brilliant stuff from the Socceroos. What the emotion must be like to score for your country in a key World Cup qualifier. Oh, it's a crossbar by Matt Ryan. Aiden Crosstitch. He makes no mistake. Welcome to all Socceroos fans. Uh, we're in day two of Socceroos camp. Uh, the big game against Japan coming up uh, in just a couple of days now. Thursday night here at Stadium Australia, just uh, over the way. Mitch Duke is with me, uh, one of the stars of the Socceroos. Thanks for joining us, Mitch. Oh, good. Looking forward to the questions that have been asked. Yeah, there are plenty of questions being asked. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can ask Mitch Duke a question for ahead of the big game against Japan here on Thursday night. A really good crowd expected. If you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure you, you jump online and grab some tickets. It'll be another special night at Stadium Australia. A stadium, Mitch, that have seen many special moments. I'm sure you've played there many times before. Uh, you, you enjoy uh, coming back home, no doubt, and, and seeing that sea of yellow at, uh, in the stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, looking forward to the massive spectacle that's coming Thursday. A lot of history with uh, Australia and Japan and uh, plan on making more memories at this uh, great stadium. We saw just how powerful a big crowd can be uh, in that game against uh, Vietnam at Amy Park uh, uh, not long ago now. And uh, watching the replays, it, it, it reminds you just uh, how brilliant it is seeing uh, stand packed of uh, Aussie fans. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, it just revs you up. It gives you goosebumps. It gi you find those extra percenters in, in the game. Um, you know, if you're chasing a goal, or, you know, you just, when you get revved up, even by uh, the little things like a tackle yeah. and, the, and the crowd cheer and, or you make a great pass, it does, honestly, it gives you confidence and it, and it makes you want to play better and, and take you to another level. So that support's going to be massive for us uh, getting over the line this Thursday for sure. Now, obviously, with our Socceroo stars all over the world, uh, players have been trickling in over the last uh, 24 hours. Tell us uh, who's arrived late last night. I saw a few fresh faces uh, in the breakfast room just now. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, one of the crazy things about these camps. Uh, you don't have uh, too much preparation time and, yeah, everyone's coming from all, all across the globe. And uh, I think Boyley, Aziz, um, Jago, I think Johnny Stensness has just yeah, arrived. Stensness, yeah. Vukovic, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, Awa, 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 Awa Mabil is actually, a yeah, very saw him. different looking Awa yeah. Mabil. He's got his new hairdo going. Yeah, rocking the pineapple, look. yeah. it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. And uh, yeah, you want the boys to get here as soon as possible, obviously to have as good a preparation as possible for Thursday. So, no, the boys are good and it, it creates that family environment as soon as they arrive and uh, seeing those friendly faces and uh, it's what you look forward to. Our mateship that we've got here is, uh, is second to none, I think, and uh, that's going to get us over the line as well. Take, uh, take the fans inside, sort of what happens on a, on a day like today. It's sort of two days before uh, the, the big game. Um, there are a lot of commitments uh, today. I think there's a, a commercial window, so there's a lot of sponsors that are involved with the soccer room, a bit of work to do with them today. Yeah, it looks like a pretty full-on schedule from <laughs> what we got sent late last night. Um, but yeah, it's just all about managing uh, the time, I guess, during the day to make sure they're also not overdoing things and, and things like that. Um, but we're so used to it now, and we've got the, the great people around us with all the staff, the physios and the doctors, to make sure that our body's going to be in tip-top shape and uh, we're also not going to be too mentally drained from everything going on. And I think they manage that really well uh, in these camps. And in terms of training, uh, not everybody's here, so there's only so much you can do uh, on a day like today. Yesterday at Leichhardt Oval was a really light session, just really just getting the, the legs going. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's crazy with what they do. And uh, like Clarkie, our physical trainer, the work he has to do to manage players that some of the boys played on Saturday, I played on Sunday, some of the boys played on Sunday, with the other travel from uh, John Roo from Paris, France, wherever. Um, you know, like you got to manage all those, uh, the time zones, the, everything like that. So it's actually pretty crazy um, with how they manage players in, uh, in different stages, recovery, plus ones, plus twos. Um, after games, so it's, and to try and get everyone on that same page by game day is, uh, is crazy, and they, they do a, a great job, and I think, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. You really only get the, the one sort of tactical session too, don't you? By the time everyone's in camp, uh, match day minus one, you sort of work on the tactics on the park? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that game day before the game, uh, sorry, the <laughs> yeah, the day before the game. The day before yeah. the game, get my words mixed up. But um, yeah, that, that's the most important day because that's where everyone's involved in that training session and getting us all pretty much on the same page tactically. So that's the most important day where everyone's pretty much 
100% ready to go for the game as well. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting the last few boys in, I think, today and, uh, and getting everyone on that field together. All right, but don't forget, plenty of questions uh, coming through. But uh, if you've got a question for Mitch Duke, send one through. Mitch, uh, let's get started with uh, some of the, the questions. Firstly, from Steve on YouTube. Um, how much is the Japan public excited for this game and, and do they regard the Socceroos as one of their big rivals? Yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a massive excitement. Obviously, I'm now based in Japan. All my teammates, they love it. There's, there does seem to be that respected rivalry, mm. I guess, in that sense. Um, they do have huge respect for Australia. The, the games have so much history. Um, they're always good spectacles, uh, even for the neutral. But um, the Japanese have huge respect for Australia in general as well. Um, and I feel that just being involved in a Japanese club in my home games, you'll see Australian flags everywhere. And yeah. I, I've got another Aussie now that's backed me up, that can back me up with that, who's Stefan Mork. So, no, look, they, they have a huge respect for us and uh, they know that we are a huge competition to their Japanese national team as well. So they expect every game that they play against Australia is not going to be easy. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be aggressive. And, uh, yeah, and look, they're so respectful in that, in that respect as well um, with what they say and uh, how they support us. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because I get so many fans that message me as well being like, we love you as a player, uh, we support you, <laughs> and now it's so complicated because you're playing against Japan, but they, they really actually say, we want Japan and Australia to qualify for the yeah. World Cup. So they, they do have that respect and the uh, amazing support with that as well. Well, that, that can technically happen. Both countries can still yeah, get through. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Owen Chandler, who um, Mitch just probably answered your question about what's it like playing against Japan and, and living there. To Sammy Mood now, uh, how's your body holding up? Yeah, body's holding up pretty well, actually. Uh, for me, I had a very disturbed pre-season. Um, well, I didn't get a pre-season, actually, because of the last camp. And I was off season with my with how the Japanese seasons line up. So um, I've kind of been using games. We're five games into the J J League now, um, and are now probably the last two games I've gotten back to 100%. So physically, I'm back to my best condition, which is good, and uh, ready to cause some damage. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you do that uh, on Thursday night. From Abby Linton, what made you fall in love with, with football as a, as a junior? Yeah, to be fair, I was just put into it at a young age um, and I was also playing cricket at the time and then as I kind of got older, I had to choose between the two and I just felt like I loved football more, I enjoyed it more and I think I made a pretty good decision. I could see Mitch Duke uh, opening the bowling for Australia, a big uh, fast bowler, were you a bowler? Yeah, I used to be quite, I was an all-rounder actually, yeah. yeah, I used to be quite good, I was <laughs> playing like a, a few years above my age group. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had to choose football. I just enjoyed yeah. it way too much. We'll have to get him in the nets, Rich, uh, yeah. and uh, just uh, see how he goes there and face a few deliveries from Mitch Duke. It'd be pretty daunting, I, I'd imagine. Absolutely. Uh, from Jake uh, Lonson, what's your favourite dog? Do you have a dog? No, I don't have a dog, and that's a tough question, actually. I've never really thought about it, to be yeah. honest. Well, if you have a dog, I am an animal. Yeah, like yeah I am an animal lover, but. Uh, bulldog. You look like a bulldog. No, no, no. Not a bulldog. <laughs> Any kind of big dog, yeah. yeah. Like husky. Labrador, anything like that, yeah. I'll be set. Good, good, good choice. Labradors are great. Um, what about from Molly? Uh, favourite Matildas player? I'd have to go Sam Kerr, only because I'd love to have her scoring stats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's, she's just a weapon up front. And uh, for doing it consistently over all these years it, it is a credit to her and her ability. No doubt playing for the Socceroos is, is a great achievement. Uh, Sean Thompson asks, what's your, what's your greatest achievement so far? Yeah, I'd probably have to just say my first goal for Australia is something yeah. that I'll never forget. Um, I'm an Aussie through and through, and it was a dream of mine, obviously, to represent my country and to say that you could, you've could you scored a goal for Australia. And if I was to never play for Australia again, even at that at that moment, I was, I was so happy and, and content with that and what I achieved. And to say I've got a few more goals is also a bonus, and I plan on getting some more. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see Mitch G score on Thursday night. Um, from Robert, uh, this is uh, all the best, Mitch. Absolute legend on and off the field. Uh, and don't forget the celebration when you score the winner. Do you know who Robert is? Ah, uh, yeah. I spoke to them on their, on, their, <laughs> on their podcast not too long ago, and they want yeah. me to do a certain celebration for those guys. So I'll be sure if I, if I do score and uh, I don't get too caught up in the occasion, uh, I'll remember to do the celebration. You're not going to tell us what it is? No, nah, uh, it's actually quite a basic. There's yeah. uh, three of the boys that run the podcast, and uh, they just want me to uh, put up three fingers. Yeah. But I feel like that celebration could get misinterpreted, yeah. thinking that I've scored a hat-trick or something. Yeah. So <laughs> I might have to score a hat-trick When you score case. the hat-trick, <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, from Ayan on Facebook, uh, having played club football in Japan, which Japanese player are you most excited to go up against? 
Um, I wouldn't say like most excited to go up against, but who's also a very dangerous player. I think that Ito at the moment um, is quite a dangerous player. And I, I do like watching him play the way he plays. He's very aggressive. He's very sharp and fast and, and, and very good on the ball. Um, so we'll definitely have to keep an eye on him regardless. And uh, yeah, I'd say I'd pro probably be him out, yep. of, out of the squad. And uh, from Bradley, uh, Juki, who's got the worst haircut in the squad? Oh, I'd probably have to say Ab on Mobile. Yeah. What I've seen this morning <laughs> is rocking the, the pineapple look and it looks terrible. But to be fair, he, he probably can pull off anything as well. So if, if I was to rock something like that, it would be 10 times worse. You call it the pineapple? Yeah. Yeah, it's I got this little button. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty much identical. Very good. And um, one from Steve as well. How are the new faces settling? We've seen quite a few new faces uh, in the squad. We may have uh, some, some new caps uh, come Thursday night. Obviously, we spoke to Nick D'Agostino yesterday. Uh, he's amongst them. Ben Falami, uh, the young Melbourne victory player, has come into the camp for the first time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I obviously met them all yesterday in, in the recovery session and it's always good to see young, exciting players get involved, especially in such big occasions. It's a good experience for them. It's only going to better them and, uh, and take them to another level, hopefully. Um, and you want to see these young players that are doing well get rewarded for, for the form that they're in. And uh, I'm looking forward to them hopefully getting an opportunity and, uh, and taking that opportunity with both hands because they are exciting young talents and uh, they're, they're proving that uh, on a weekly basis. So. And, yeah, and not only that, you've got a, a new face who's an experienced face in, in Bruno Fornaroli who uh, plays in a, in a similar role as you. I suppose some of that experience that he's had throughout his career can certainly help uh, some of those younger players. Yeah, absolutely, even me. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always looked up to him um, and we've got a good connection over the years. Uh, we followed each other on social media, um, just playing against each other in the A-League and you know, it's a credit to his ability of what he's brought to the A-League and, and Australian football. His, his hold-up play is second to none, I think, and uh, yeah, he could teach a lot of boys some of that mm. and add that to their game because uh, it's such a huge quality to have as a striker. And for me, I definitely will be having a few few words with him about that, so I can I can try and add a bit more to that in my game. It's interesting watching Bruno. Um, you know, even at, at, at meal time, he sort of holds court on his table, doesn't he? He's, uh, he's settled in. Looks like he's settled in pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. He's a he's a kangaroo now, which yeah. is awesome to see. <laughs> nah, look, he's he's a, he's a great lad, and you can tell tell he's just uh, from day one. He's he's he feels welcome and comfortable, and, and that's what you want because for him being comfortable and happy, uh, that'll show on the pitch and. Uh, He'll be a huge asset for us. All right. Uh, thank you, Mitch, for spending some time with the fans today. Thank you to everyone who sent through all their questions. Keep an eye on our social media today because we'll capture that a mobile hairstyle for <laughs> yeah. you and uh, you can rate it for us uh, one out of ten. I'm sure he'll have plenty of fans with that new hairdo, but Mitch Duke isn't one of them. Don't forget the Socceroos take on Japan on Thursday night here in Sydney, Stadium Australia. It's going to be a massive night. Get your tickets if you haven't got so already. Uh, the boys need all of you out there to support them in what is a massive clash. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Fans know that we get a lift from seeing a green and gold in the stands. Passionate, tough games. They're on our soil and we want the three points. Come watch us play against Japan and create another memory in soccer's history. Brilliant stuff from the Socceroos. What the emotion must be like to score for your country in a key World Cup qualifier. Oh, to a crossbar by Matt Ryan. Aiden Frostich. He makes no mistake.